I'm Steve Wiggins, and this is the Groundworks Ministries podcast. Today we're reading from the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 4. Let's focus on verse 3. When the troops returned to the camp, the elders of Israel asked, Why did the Lord let us be defeated today by the Philistines? Let's bring the ark of the Lord's covenant from Shiloh, and then it will go with us and save us from the hand of our enemies. 1 Samuel chapter 4, verse 3. Now last week, I noticed that my cologne had run out, <clears throat> as did everyone who had to smell my natural musk. <laughs> And when I went to a department store fragrance counter, I noticed there was a small cup of coffee beans. Actually, there was several of them laying around on the counter. And the person at the counter told me that I should smell this cup of beans in between sampling fragrances because the smell of coffee helps to cleanse the nose's palate. Sounds so sophisticated. It just allows you to differentiate between the scents if you smell a little bit of coffee. And the opening statement of 1 Samuel chapter 4, where it says, And Samuel's words came to all of Israel. Well, that sounds more like the closing thought of chapter 3. We don't hear any more from Samuel until chapter 7. And so Samuel's absence is intended to act as those coffee beans. It sort of cleanses the reader's palate. The Lord is drawing a distinction between the sweet aroma of Samuel's personal worship and his leadership He's drawing a distinction between that and the stench of Israel's natural, uh, national worship under the direction of Eli and his sons, Hophni and Phinehas. So today's passage begins with a question. Why did the Lord let us be defeated? Well, perhaps you have faced that question in your own life. Israel should have done well to let that question linger for a while. And then perhaps the Lord's threats in Leviticus 26, verses 14 through 17 would have come to mind. Here's what the Lord said there in Leviticus 26. But if you do not obey me and observe my commands, if you reject my statutes and you despise my ordinances, and you do not observe all of my commands and you break my covenant, then I will do all of this to you wasting disease and fever that will cause your eyes to fail, remember Eli, and your life will ebb away, remember Phinehas' wife. You will sow your seed in vain because your enemies will eat it, and I will turn against you so that you will be defeated by your enemies. Leviticus 26, verses 14 through 17, the Lord had predicted all this would come, and sadly, in the midst of their anxiety, Israel resorted to a rabbit's foot theology. What do I mean by that? They should have remembered God's word and repented and then drawn close to the God of the covenant. But instead, Israel made an impetuous decision based on their ignorance of God's word. They decided to bring the ark of the covenant of God to them instead of going to the ark themselves. The assumption was that God would be forced to protect his reputation or else his little house that they had built for him will be destroyed. Despite his children's obvious rebellion, they thought that they could make God do something against his word. And as they say in Jerusalem, Yahweh don't play that. <laughs> the Lord will suffer shame rather than allow us to carry on a false relationship with him, especially in public. And he will allow us to be disappointed with him if that will eventually Awaken your understanding of His holiness. Have you noticed how things go better with confession and prayer? Well, then let's make sure that our delight is in aligning ourselves with God's will rather than trying to coerce God to align His will to ours. When the church stops confessing, Thou art worthy, and stay in exchange for Thou art useful, well, then we know that the ark of God has once again been captured. Then again, the Lord may be cleansing the palate for revival once more. That's what we're working for. How can we know the path to revival? So to escape such a rebuke from the Lord in our generation? Well, we escape it by seeking God as Samuel did. The only way to ensure that Ichabod, which means the glory of the Lord has departed, the only way to ensure that that will not be written over the doorposts of our churches is to keep the door of your heart propped open to Jesus and to continually welcome His presence. 
I'm Steve Wiggins, and this is the Groundworks Ministries podcast. Groundworks Ministries operates entirely through financial donations from faithful people like you. And if you're being ministered to through the Bible teaching of Groundworks Ministries and you'd like to help us to grow and to reach this generation with the gospel, would you consider donating to Groundworks Ministries today? Donating is secure and it's easy at our website. Check us out at groundworksministries.com.